Hey Welcome back, everybody. So in the last video, remember we talked about formal charges. We talked about how to determine the amount of electrons an atom is in control of, whether those electrons be in a lone pair or they be in a single bond or whatever. And then we talked about how to, you know, determine that atom's valence electron number and then how to subtract those two numbers to calculate an atom's formal charge. Remember how I said that that never goes away? Well, neither does resonance. If I'm going to kind of make a nerdy analogy, resonance and formal charges are almost like your multiplication tables. And if you're doing like some type of higher math, like calc, you know, everyone just assumes you know your times tables. And they're a valuable skill to know like that. Well, you kind of need to be that good at resonance and formal charges. But don't worry, they're not that hard. But I'm just trying to stress that practice them now and your life will be a lot easier down the line. Okay. So I could give you a definition of what resonance is, but I'd rather just show you guys and then kind of explain it from there. Okay, well, let me draw this for you. I can draw you the Lewis dot structure of acetic acid, and you'll see why. Okay, so here's acetic acid in all of its glory. But I'm going to do something and then kind of explain it after I do it. If I were to take this electron pair and move it to make a double bond right here by drawing a double-headed arrow and pointing to where it's going, I kind of have to move a bond. Otherwise, I'm going to break the octet rule for this carbon because I'd have one, two, three, four, five bonds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these bonds right here that it comprises of two electrons, and I'm going to move it up here. Okay? And I'm going to draw the resultant structure over here right where this double-sided arrow is pointing. So it's going to look like this. Okay. So now this oxygen has three lone pairs. We have a double bond down here. This oxygen now has just one lone pair. And if you were thinking ahead of formal charges, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. For oxygen, six valence, so six minus seven minus charge. And for oxygen down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 minus 5, that is a plus 1 charge. Okay, so I know it was a little fast, but let me kind of explain where I went with that. So resonance is this idea that if you have a structure, and then it's the right situation, and you have enough electron density across a certain number of atoms, you can kind of move those electrons around. And you can make the structure look different. It's still the same structure, but it kind of just looks different. And usually, there's a different distribution of charge in the structure. So you can see that over here, we're a neutral compound, right? Acetic acid. No charges whatsoever. But by moving this pair of electrons right here and forming this double bond and kicking this electron pair up on that oxygen, you can see that we induced a positive one formal charge on this oxygen here while also inducing a negative formal charge right here on this oxygen. But don't fret because you can see that overall in the structure, we're still net neutral. And that's what we are over here. So resonance is this idea that you can move electrons around, you can shift charges around or create charges to make a structure look different. However, it's always going to be the same atom to atom connection. And this is a pretty tame example, but what resonance really is good for is showing how charges can move across a structure. So let me give you a better example. All right. So what I'm going to draw for you guys, and now we're going to switch kind of the bond line, get you in the, the mindset of drawing a bond line, is if I drew you guys something like this. Actually, let me draw it a little smaller. That's pretty good. If I drew something like this. OK. So there's a negative charge in this carbon because I'm, if, if we draw in quickly his implied hydrogens, his octet is filled by one bond to this carbon, two bonds to hydrogen, that's three bonds, and then the, the last two electrons are from the lone pair. And if we're going to do, assign the formal charge, it would be one, two, three, four, five. Carbon comes in with four. Four minus five is a negative one. Okay. Just want to make that clear. Okay, so here's what we can do. 
Resonance allows us to kind of move this charge around. And here's why. So here, you designate you're about to draw resonance from one structure to make another structure by including this double-headed arrow. So how do we do this? Well, if I were to form a double bond right here, and I've, or if I were to move this double bond up here as a lone pair, we could generate a new structure. Right? So let's draw our double-headed arrow right here in between this carbon and this carbon to designate that we're about to form a bond. And we need to kick this electron pair, this bond, up as an electron pair because otherwise this carbon would have one, two, three, and he has a fourth bond to a, uh, an invisible hydrogen. That would be the fifth bond right here. So we have to kick this guy up. So the resultant structure would look like this. New double, the double bond is now shifted over here because this guy came down to form one. And now the alone pair is over here and the charge has moved over there. So that's kind of what resonance is. Basically, when there's no resonance present, an atom generally has to bear the full burden of a positive or negative charge. However, resonance is the idea that if there are electrons around that, electrons or the lack of electrons around a charge, you can kind of move that charge from just one atom to a network of atoms or across the whole network of atoms in a structure. And what that does is it kind of just distributes a charge and it's a, a stabilizing effect because it's basically like if I was carrying a boulder on my back, that's kind of hard. However, if I had like six really strong friends, then the burden isn't so tough on me. So resonance is a really stabilizing force. Okay, so enough of my terrible analogies. I'll just show you guys another example. So I know on the first worksheet that I had for you guys, you guys had to draw the structure of ozone which I'm just going to draw real quick because that's we're interested in resonance in this video looks like this negative charge on this oxygen because he is in control of seven and a positive on this oxygen because he is in control of five okay so can we draw resonance and the answer is yes let's see how we can kind of shift charge around this molecule of ozone so I'm going to include my double-headed arrow to show somebody, hey, I'm going to draw some resonance. So here's what we can do. We can take this electron pair and swing it down to form a double bond right here. At the same time, we need to move an electron pair. Otherwise, this oxygen, you guessed it, is going to break the octet rule. So let's take one of these bonds and move them over here onto this oxygen. Right? And remember, I'm starting my arrows at electrons and then showing where they're moving with double-headed arrows. And you can see that over here, I'm starting my base of my arrow over here and moving my electron pair right there. Okay, so here's what that looks like. We can see that this guy's going to have three lone pairs. Minus. This guy's just going to be a double bond right here. Two lone pairs. And nothing changed on the middle guy he still looks the same. So negative charge down there, positive charge up here, and that's a resonance form of ozone. So you might be thinking, all right, Joe, you basically just drew the same thing again. Well, yes and no. Yes, we have the same three atoms here, but you can see that, you know, this is happening all the time. This is not a static thing. Ozone just doesn't look like this, and it just doesn't look like this. In a way, you can see that these two bonds, they're not really just a double and a single. They're kind of a mixture. This bond is somewhere in between a double and a single, and so is this bond, a double and a single. There's this idea that structures don't look just like one thing if there's resonance present. They look like a, a mixture of all the different resonance forms that you can draw of that structure. So if you kind of just mash these two together, Ozone kind of looks like a mixture of these two. Okay, so hopefully this isn't too confusing. I kind of have a couple of rules that helps when drawing resonance. That one, the charge of the molecule, molecule that you start with before drawing resonance has to stay the same. So if you have a positive one charge overall in the molecule, then you better have that positive one charge 
when you draw a resonance structure. Whatever additional charges you produce, the net charge should be a positive one, or whatever you start out with. The other two are kind of intuitive when you see them done, and you'll eventually just kind of make them inherent. So you should move electrons towards positive charges, and you should move electrons away from negative charges. So kind of have that mindset of uh, opposites attract and like charges repel. But let me just show you an example. Okay, so let me draw you in bond line a structure like this. Okay? So, some organic structure with a positive charge over here. So that means this carbon right here is lacking a bond. So really he is this one bond to carbon and two implied hydrogen, or bonds to hydrogen. Okay, so the rule that we have with positive charges when we're drawing resonance is move electrons toward a positive charge. And here's what I mean. So, double-headed arrow because we're going to, you know, draw some resonance. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bond and I'm going to move it, both electrons, over here. So the base of my arrow goes from here, over here, double-headed arrow pointing to moving the double bond over here. So here's the resultant structure. Okay, I didn't touch that double bond. The new, the double bond was moved over here. So if you can see that these two guys were a part of the double bond initially, he is still a part of the double bond, but now he's missing out, right? He kind of lost a bond. So now the positive charge goes to him, right? So we moved electrons towards the positive charge to move the positive charge. And you can see we can even do that one more time, right? I'll draw the arrow down this time. If I move this double bond over here, then the positive charge will shift from here to the other end carbon, or the terminal carbon. Double bond wasn't touched over here. The double bond is now moved over here. This guy loses the double bond. This guy remains a part of the double bond, so he's okay. But now the positive charge is moved over there. Okay? We'll do one more example, and then we'll wrap up our discussion of resonance. Okay. So we're going to kind of end this on a little bit more complex one, but I really encourage you to rewatch these videos, practice, 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 and really hit the worksheet hard with formal charges and resonance because, like I said, they are so important. Okay, so we're going to look at the structure of a molecule called phenol, and it looks like this. All right, so try and stick with me. Maybe just kind of watch and then go back over this. This is kind of as hardcore as the resonance will get. So if you can get this, then you're well on your way to being a resonance master. Okay, so we don't really see any positive or negative charges here. The other kind of exception to that rule is you can move electrons towards neutral atoms. Okay, so let's take these electrons right here and let's move them into the ring. So if I swing these down to form a double bond, this guy would break the octet rule unless I do something. So here's what we can do. Then we can kick this double bond up on this carbon as a lone pair. So I'll have the arrow pointing directly at the atom. Draw my single-headed arrows. Redraw the ring. So let's draw everything first that we did not touch. Didn't touch this double bond. I didn't touch that double bond. Okay? I now have a double bond up here between the oxygen and the carbon. I have this bond to hydrogen over here, and I still have one lone pair. And if you quick do oxygens, if you evaluate his formal charge, he now has a positive one formal charge. And if you draw the lone pair on this carbon, and you evaluate his formal charge, he is now a minus one. And you can see we didn't violate our first rule, because we started out neutral, and even though we have two charges in the, new res in the one first resonance form of this molecule, we have a net overall zero charge, so we're good to go. Okay, but we're not done yet. We can continue to draw more resonance forms because we can move this electron pair and kind of bump these electrons. So let's keep going. So if I take this electron pair and I swing down them, swing them down here to reform a double bond here, oops, sorry, I can now take this double bond and I'm going to have to move them somewhere, otherwise the octet rule is broken here. What I can do is I can bump this double bond up as a lone pair on this carbon. Again, draw my arrows to show that I'm drawing resonance. 
Let's redraw the ring. Okay? Didn't touch this double bond. Didn't touch the double bond up on the oxygen. He still bonded to hydrogen. The lone pair wasn't touched. Still a positive charge. All right, so I reformed a double bond here. So that's what we got going on there. And now the lone pair shifted down here, causing a negative charge on the bottom carbon. Okay, one more resonance structure. Stay with me. Okay, so we got one more resonance structure coming. If I take this uh, lone pair and swing it down to form a double bond, I now have to kick up that pi bond or that double bond. Sorry, gave away a little term in the future. I'm going to kick up this double bond on that carbon. So if we draw our last resonance form, last ring, we got a double bond there. We have a new double bond here. We have the double bond up here that we didn't touch. Oxygen is still bonded to hydrogen. The lone pair is still there. We still have a plus charge on the oxygen. Negative charge is now over here. And you can look at all these structures. There's a net overall charge of zero. Okay. So I can't even continue to stress how important resonance is. You have to be very comfortable with it. So not a bad idea to go over this video again, draw the resonance, uh, draw the, the structures that we practice on before you look at them. Maybe try it, see if you got it right, like watch the video, but definitely hit the worksheet and hit the worksheet hard. And hey, you're one step closer to finishing Gen Chem Bootcamp. See you guys later.